if you go to places like Reddit or 4chan or really anywhere that discusses technology, you'll probably hear people saying things like Discord is a botnet, Brave is a botnet, LastPass is a botnet, Windows is a botnet. Basically, anything that has a network connection that some people don't like, someone is going to refer to as a botnet. And the conclusion that I've come to here is that a lot of people either don't know what a botnet is and are just repeating something they've heard someone else say, or they know exactly what a botnet is and are just trying to reduce the severity of the term because technically you could use botnet in a non-malicious way, except over time it's sort of adopted this malicious meaning and if you want to refer to the exact same thing in a non-malicious way, there is a perfectly good term for it that everyone watching this video has heard. But I'll save that for a bit later. For now, let's just go into simple terms on what a botnet actually is. Okay, so the general idea is that you gain control of a bunch of different computing systems to get them to perform some specific task. Now, it doesn't actually matter where the systems are located. They could be separated by, you know, country borders, or they could even be in the exact same data center. All that matters is that you have access to them, and the way that you gain access to them doesn't really matter either. So typically, it's going to be done through some form of malware, just because this provides a way to easily distribute software to control these systems. But say you had physical access to a data center and installed some sort of software to control these systems. This could still be a form of botnet. Now, while many botnets are created to perform some illegal task, and many of the examples you'll find online will be of something like, say, DDoSing, you don't have to make a botnet explicitly to do something illegal. Even if you created a botnet to do something like distributed video rendering, even though the task you're performing, if you owned all of those systems or had authorized access to them, wouldn't be illegal, the fact that you have unauthorized access to these systems is what the problem is. Now, typically you'll have a botnet performing a single task as this is gonna make it easier for the master of the network to actually manage all of the systems involved. The other reason why a single task is common is because a lot of botnets want to avoid early detection. So even though they could do things like say crypto mining 24 seven and run it at absolute max performance, if you do that, someone may notice that there's something wrong with their system and then shut it down and take it to get repaired or find some way to actually get themselves removed from the botnet. But if you only do it, say, at 5% capacity or you only do it while the system is inactive, it's going to take much longer for someone to actually notice that something is wrong. The ultimate goal of the botnet is to operate for as long as possible and for some tasks like say sending spam email, you don't actually need that much performance to handle it. Now I've gone over a couple of use cases for a botnet, but the general overarching theme is it's going to be operated for some form of monetary gain. Say with DDoSing for example, you can charge people to actually DDoS someone they want to DDoS, or if you're going to be sending out spam email, you're trying to get someone to click on a link. If you're trying to do crypto mining, well that one's kind of obvious, or maybe you're trying to do something like password cracking so you can sell those accounts. All of these have some form of monetary gain attached to them, as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be like that. The reason why it's like that, though, is because if you're going to be doing something illegal, you probably want something out of it. Technically, you could take control of a bunch of systems and then turn them into a distributed RAID server or turn them into a bunch of game servers. And these would still be botnets, but I, for one, haven't seen that use case. And that sort of takes into why I think the term botnet actually is important and especially using it properly because let's say we want to do something like crypto mining on a bunch of different systems, but this time we want to do it in a proper way. So what we're going to do is we're going to rent a bunch of VPSs and we're going to have them all work together on this single task. Well, what we've described now is just cloud computing. From the technical aspect of controlling a distributed or cloud computing system, whichever term you prefer to use, they mean the exact same thing, and a botnet, there is absolutely no difference. Everything that can be done with a botnet can also be done with cloud computing, and everything that can be done with cloud computing can also be done with a botnet, because all botnet actually means is basically malicious cloud computing. But the same way we don't use something like malicious software, we refer to it as malware, the term botnet is a much more convenient way to refer to this network, so it makes more sense to keep botnet as meaning the malicious form of this computing. 
Now, this definition doesn't exist uncontested. There are some articles out there trying to basically say that the terms cloud computing and botnet can be used interchangeably, but all this really does in my mind is muddy the discussion without any real benefit being added. So for example, if an article comes out that says some new form of malware attack was discovered, everyone implicitly understands that the term malware means some form of malicious software. But that's because the term malware is always used in a malicious way. But then you have another article titled a new botnet attack discovered, but some people are using botnet in a positive way. Now you've made it much less clear if the positive usage really is a positive usage. Basically, we have a malicious term for it, so keep the malicious term being the malicious term. Now, let's go into the architecture of botnets. So, traditionally, they were built with a client server model. Basically, this means you have a master server, and then all of the clients are going to be the infected systems. And then the master server basically sends instructions to all of those systems to perform whatever task they need to perform. But this architecture has a serious flaw. So what happens if the master node shuts down or through some other means, the master node gets detached from the network? Well, what you have now is a bunch of infected client systems that aren't receiving any instructions. So while they might still be infected, they're effectively not operating in a botnet anymore. Now, a well-designed network will have a backup master node, but all this really does is delays the problem. The better way to handle this is rather than having a separate client and a server, make every single infected system on the botnet operate in both roles, and that is going to be a peer-to-peer -peer model. Basically, the idea here is rather than having each of the infected systems be connected to a single point of failure being the master node, you instead have all of the infected systems connecting to each other and then instructing each other on what tasks need to be done. This makes it a far more resilient system because if one of the infected systems is removed from the network, well, now the other systems just connect to a different one and they're good to go still. This basically means that the only way to stop a network like this is to basically shut down every node on the network. Which, as you may expect, for obvious reasons, can be quite difficult. Now, when you hear the term botnet, you only hear about the really big botnet attacks because that's what's going to make headlines. So, hundreds of thousands of infected systems or millions of infected systems. But in reality, there's no size restriction on when something starts becoming a botnet as long as there is enough systems on the network to actually be a network. So, more than one. Another thing you'll typically hear is about these big online attacks, but does a botnet actually need to be online? I'm going to say no. As long as the systems are networked in some way, they don't actually have to be connected to the internet. So I may know a professor who may have turned their uni Mac lab into a Bitcoin farm at one point. He wasn't exactly allowed to do this, but I'm going to say that this still was a botnet. Obviously, it is a very small scale botnet with only 50 or so systems being affected, but I still think it's a botnet nonetheless. Now, the issue I take with referring to things like Windows as a botnet is you chose to install Windows on your system knowing exactly what it would be capable of. It's not like you were tricked into getting automatic updates. You chose to give Microsoft permission to do that, so that inherently makes it not a botnet. Same with something like Brave. Yes, Brave injects ads into your system, and yes, Brave has some form of master control node that decides what ads actually go out to you, but you accepted this by deciding to run Brave on your system, inherently making it not a botnet. That is my rant over for today. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. If you want to have a discussion about this in the comment section down below, please go and do so. I'm not going to get into any arguments with people about this, so if you want to have a civil discussion, I am more than happy to chat with you about this. But besides that, if you'd like to go and support my content, you can go do so over on Patreon, like all of these lovely people over on this side. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, Lee, Stephen, Tony, Zushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support more work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, side, leave pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast as well. Tech over T available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute. BitChute is kind of a mess right now, uh, right now because their uploader is garbage. And I haven't been able to upload there for about a month. So I'm working on something to potentially replace BitChute. 
I'll let you know when that happens. So I think that's going to be everything for me, and I'm out.